Oh, I've got an idea. It was to carry milk on my head. Ladies, gentlemen, and pals of all ages, Pal World is a big sprawling game that essentially melds three different genres together, creature catching, survival, and automation. While the first one is the thing that appeals to most of the people that play the game, the survival and the basic base functions are a very big secondary draw, but I think the thing that goes most underappreciated is the automation aspect of this game. The way that you can set up a base to basically just run itself entirely with the minimum amount of effort or interaction involved from the player themselves. There is a a lot of stuff in this game that will drain your resources like crazy, wood and rocks being a big early hurdle, but then specifically ore and the ingots that you get from them being something that you want hundreds and thousands of, but takes a lot of time to do if you don't have the right setup. So basically automation is something that's better to come to terms with earlier rather than later, and so today we'll be going over two full base setups, the first one being a more sort of standard one, your main base of operation so to say, and it's more just a template, obviously you don't have to set it up as simply as this, and the second one being a specifically mining focused base. And we'll, of course, also talk about the specific pals you want to aim for to help make this process as effective as possible early on, too. It's worth mentioning this game does get into full-on factory-level assembly lines later in the game, but we are focusing basically on just things leading up to level 30, for now, where it's a bit less clear how to be successful. Starting off with your main base of operations, then, generally speaking, the specific location will be up to your aesthetic choices, for sure, but you ideally want it to have some wood and some rocks, and ideally even a bit of ore, to at least to get you started off at the right beginning to start with. Once you have your location, set, then the first thing that you want to set up, quite simply, is food. The type of the food that you can get can vary as you get further into the game, but the simplest production simply comes from berry plantations, which you can see right here. You want to make these with berry seeds, then any pals that are assigned to the base with the planting skill will lay down seeds automatically when required, and any pals assigned to the base with a watering skill will do the same, but with watering, of course. You also want to get a feed box as soon as possible. This is just a place where the food will be stored that your pals can automatically take it from to feed themselves when they're hungry, so you don't have to do it yourself. And of course, the berries will be brought over by any pals with the transporting base skill. So already you see the importance of managing which pals are in your base, as generating a constant food source is already requiring three different types, but of course, lots of pals have overlapping base skills too, so this will actually make this function quite easily, not to mention you can have quite a lot of pals once you have your base upgraded a little bit. Once you have your food set up then, you can start working out your actual resource farms. First, you want the literal, genuine farm, the ranch specifically. Different pals are farmable for different things when they're grazing here depending on what you want from them. Chickapea gives you eggs, Vixie can dig up free pal spheres, arrows, and even gold when assigned to the farm, but my biggest recommendation is Mozzarina, the cow pal. You can find them all around this location here on your map, and when put in the ranch, they create milk. Milk is of course another consumable food that helps fill that need, but more importantly, it is the main hurdle to get a good breeding setup later in the game, so getting some early milk farm going is really actually important long term. Then we hit the next stage of the automation process, which is wood and stone. Once you have this set up properly, you should rarely, if ever, have to manually chop a tree or mine a regular old rock. You just won't need to. At level 7 in the game, you will unlock the logging site and the stone pit. Both of these serve the same purpose, though through different means. The logging site is an infinitely regenerating source of wood, which specifically means if you have pals with the logging skill, they will actively just chop down wood all day long. You can see it has a cap of just under 10,000. You do have to actively pick them up yourself and put them into the chest, but the process of farming them is automatic. The stone pit then does the exact same thing, but for stone stone, and the pals that interact with it are the ones with the mining base skill. For specific pals for this, Dinosom is great early as a mixed lumberer and planter, which will help keep your berries rolling, but also take care of your trees. And this one can be found on the very starter island, but it's around level 16-ish. For mining, the best recommendation that I could possibly have for you is Pen King. You can fight a guaranteed boss version of this pal once per hour at level 15, just a bit northeast of the first syndicate tower, and you can catch him every time that you fight him here, which is great because Pen King is level 2 watering, fixing your berries up real nicely. Level 2 handiwork, which is just great to have around in general, and level 2 mining to take care of your new quarry, level 2 cooling, which we aren't using yet, but then also level 2 transport, which is fantastic too for an automated setup. Essentially, he's just an insanely strong base working pal even to have multiple of, and I highly recommend him. The final step of early game base automation then is the crusher. You can use the crusher to turn stone into palladium or wood into fiber. Both of these are important materials, of course, as well to have quite a lot of, especially palladium, and so you use the wood and stone that you generate from your logging site and stone pit to funnel into the crusher. Then any pal with the watering base skill will slowly turn it into the new material of choice here, and that pretty much covers your main base automation, really. Food taken care of by default, farming for milk and other valuables like wool or gold or arrows or pal bells, whatever. 
whatsoever, Wooden Stone no longer a factor in the slightest, and with an effective enough team, even Paldium will stop being a roadblock once the Crusher is in motion too. So you essentially have removed the gathering section for every basic material in this one singular base, and this is just a basic template that you can build around entirely. The exact layout doesn't matter, so you can add in your own house to live in, you can put in a breeding area if you want, those types of things of course, but this is your basic automated base. Before we move on then, one more extra special nod to a couple of the pals, Loopmon. This pal is only available at night, showing up in specifically these areas, which is pretty common, but he has an exclusive level 2 handiwork based skill. Essentially what you want to do is stick him on your base if you are crafting things at workbenches or trying to put up a structure of some sort that requires F holding crafting time. And because he is level 2, he will always be helpful, but because he has no other base skills, he can't get distracted by any other tasks, so he will always be ready to help out the active craft. That said, you can stick him on your base while crafting for efficiency, then just replace him with a more automation focused thing before you walk away, making him very good for one specific purpose in short bursts. Then there's also the opposite end of that too with something like Leaf Monk, which you can find pretty much everywhere, and are decently good at just a massive amount of different base things, which is great to have at your main base specifically, just letting you cut out a bunch of different holes that you might have within your grouping. With that then, let's dive on into our second and arguably more important and specific base setup, which is going to be your mining base. The main goal of this base, above all else, is to create an efficient source of ore and ingots with minimal player input, as we have pretty much everything else going on in this good starter quantities at the main base. But ore is incredibly important, and generally speaking, you want your ore base to be very specifically ore focused. You want every pal at the location to have a specific goal for being there, and that goal is either ore or the things required to actually fuel the ore farm itself. For this, I also have a specific location to recommend, which is the southern tip of this island right here on the edge of it, right in between the two starting areas over here and over here. Essentially, what you want this here for is the specific area has a ton of ore nodes that naturally grow here, but very little trees. It's also on a cliff face, so you can cut off half of the actual base area. Your pals won't do anything down off the cliff, obviously, so the only things that they will interact with are the things in the circle, and the things that are in the circle is a small number of trees, but then also a big number of natural growing ore nodes. So to actually make this happen as effectively as possible, you of course want all of the basics to actually make it function. You want an equivalent number of pal beds to the number of pals you'll be having in the base, then you just want to set up a couple of berry plantations as well. We went over this in the first section, but the berry plantations are just the easiest, simplest way to actually make food in the game, but unlike the main base, you don't really want to upgrade to different food types later on, you just want this one to be more berry plantations, if nothing else. And the main reason is that it is just the simplest food that you can create for low to mid-level pals. All it takes is seeding, watering, and transport, no cooking involved at all. And of course you also want a food box to actually store it all. Ideally, you want storage chests near all of the ore nodes so that the transport pals have the minimum distance to cover in between, and you also want, honestly, a number of furnaces, but one furnace will do the job to you start off with, as it's just where you actually turn the ore into actually ingots. You ideally want it to be near the ore node so nobody has to do much traveling, and you also want to have a storage chest right beside it. We will go over specific pals in a moment, but the goal here is you want mining pals to mine the raw natural ore nodes, which do respawn over time and thus create an infinite gathering source with the amount that we have here. You then want to have transport transport pals which will move the ore to storage chests, and you can have the furnace set up to be smelting the ore to turn into ingots, and leave a kindling base skill pal to do the actual cooking work. More furnaces means that you can use more kindling pals at the same time to cook faster as a result, but that is the main purpose of this base. Everything else exists to support it. For example, the berry plantation and food box is exclusively to keep your workers fed, that's it. You should also of course put in a hot spring into this base too, just to keep the workers unstressed and working at their best. And it's worth mentioning that there is also the modern station that you can create to use to order your pals to go into overdrive and work extra hard, but generally speaking, especially early game, that just winds up causing long-term issues. You don't want to worry about that this early on. All that said, let's go over the four specific pals that you want to have at this base, by which I mean the four types of pals, the four species, basically. You obviously want more than four individual pals, but anything more than four here, you just want to be copies of the same ones, really, to up the same production rate. Number one, then, is the one that we already talked about, which is Penking. This big guy simply fills some really important roles here in quite a big way, too. Most specifically, as level two watering for the berry growing, then level 2 mining for wealthed mining, which is the main purpose of the operation. He also does level 2 handiwork, but that won't distract him here, as there should be no handiwork going on on a daily basis, and he also has level 2 cooling, but again, there's no cooling to be done here, so no distraction. Then his last base skill is transportation, transporting things around, which is really good to have here anyways. The second pal, then, is actually going to be Tombat. 
Gathering level 2 doesn't really affect us here, so it's not a distraction, but mining level 2 is of course excellent. Then just transporting, again. Essentially you just need enough pinking to fuel the berry watering, then tombats will do the job past that for pure miners. These pals spawn at night in a ton of different places around the map, they're not very hard to find at all at relatively low levels. Then the third of the four pals is going to be Moss Sanda. This one is on the higher end of the early game spectrum, being in the high 20s when you first get to them around the grassy central areas of the map really, but they are an absolute powerhouse with level 2 planting, which of course fuels our berry plantations. Level 2 handiwork, which won't be a distraction here. Level 3 transporting to just help move stuff back and forth as needed, and level 3 is of course great there, but then also level 2 lumber, which is why we specifically want an area with minimal trees around it too, so that there just isn't much of a distraction on that side of things for your big panda friend. Then we have our fourth of the four perfect early game ore farmers, which is going to be Van Worm. This one is found a decent bit in from the starting islands, but not too hard to find around level 15 to 20, so not too late by any means. And and this one is pretty unique for how early you can find it, in that it has exclusively Kindling level 1, which is great, and Transporting. Kindling only level 1 is sorta of sad, but it will do the job, especially with Transporting level 3 as well. Transporting is a really big part of this stage of the operation, and Transporting level 3 is really big to get on this early game of a creature. Between these four then, you have Planting and Watering for your berries, Transport to move the berries around, which will automatically feed your working pals, you have two separate level 2 miners, one Kindler, and then just a ton of Transporting power between all the different Pals. The end result is just a pure efficiency mining operation. It, it may not be nice to look at necessarily, but it works incredibly well and will easily get you past that start of mid game ingot bottleneck to upgrading to newer, better, and fancier stuff. That just about does it then. The basics of how to automate the really simple materials at your main base, but then also a full, simple efficiency base setup to automate ore generation and ingot creation. Hopefully, this will help you out in some way, and hopefully, it helps you enjoy this game even more. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage is, uh, goodbye.